Welcome back, everyone, to another exhibition match replay. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a match between Escobombardo and Lu Chen Chans on Doom Patrol Redux, which I should disclose at the moment. This is, in fact, a... This is a matchmaking map, but a change was made to the matchmaker about, I feel like, four months ago that allowed for a wider range of match matchmaking to happen. So a wider range of, like, LO difference between games. But... Players will be compensated who are players who are the weaker player will be compensated by an increase in the amount of metal that they receive per metal extractor. Or something like that. Anyway, so there is a slight handicap of 110%. Oh, that's not. Oh no, that's not what's happening at all. That wasn't per play. Wait, why is it saying a handicap of 110%? Oh! No, Escobombardo has the handicap, actually. Bizarrely. Well, okay, apparently Escobombardo was considered to be the weaker player. That's... That was unexpected, but okay. I don't... I don't know. I mean, it's not really reflected in the rating, but alright then. So yeah, Escobombardo is going to have a 10% increase in metal, just to point that out. But yeah, that's how a lot of matches work nowadays. If you want to avoid it, there's an option to avoid it. But if you want to be able to play a larger range of players and you just end up having extra metal when you play against them, this is how you do it. It's pretty neat. Personally, I think it's pretty cool because it's one of those things that... I mean, I often compare 0k to go, despite the fact that I'm a terrible go player, because well, just a lot of the ways that the territory control gameplay works... But, well, there's one thing that Go has, is a handicap system that allows people to basically play any other person and have a relatively even match. And it's nice to see that 0k has a similar system, even if it's... It's something that is... I mean, it's optional, of course, but it's, you know, something that's there, so I'm glad that exists. Anyhow. Lu Chen Chan's putting quite a lot of pressure on Escobombardo right off the bat. Escobombardo also kind of falling behind in terms of energy economy, looking like they're about to excess pretty soon. Lu Chen Chan's also expanding considerably more aggressively. They've basically contained out Esco Bombardo. They have... They've left nothing really for them to do. Esco Bombardo switching over to Recluse. Figuring that will deal with the Ducks. Not a bad idea. I do think Redback will be a better choice, just considering, but that's coming as well. Yeah, it's come about it, unfortunately for them, does not have any solar collectors here. Doesn't have much in the way of power production. So they are going to be in quite a bind. So Lu Chen Chan's kind of like this. You got a you know, triple duck going around, like three, three duck squads just roving around the map. Make sure just to keep track of whatever's going on. Man, it's, you know, 240 metal worth of unit. It's... Now, they are quite strong individually because of the missiles. So, I like that. It's, I think it's a solid number. At this point, just using that to maintain contains as well. Like, spread it out, you know? No, I, I get to see everything. I get to make sure you don't get to build up. And that's come about trying to figure out what to do against that. I mean, Spider is really atypical on a map like this. <clears throat> because Spider on flat map often suffers from the fact that they don't... I mean, this is a relatively flat map. Everything's pathable by everything. Spiders on a map like this tend to suffer just because they are slower overall. Their strength comes more when you have cliffs and such where they can cross them quickly, but other units can't. Not that it's impossible to win with spiders. It's just that you have to think more in terms of how are you going to like, proactively move somewhere on the map with your units so that you can actually deal with stuff before it becomes a problem. Or you build dozens of fleas. That's the other option. But yeah, if you're going for Venom, Redback, Recluse, that you're going to have to do stuff in advance. You're going to have to do a lot of scouting. You're going to have to do a lot of prediction. You need radar, which I don't think... Lo I don't think Escamoto... Oh, Escamoto does have the commander. They have the commander. They have the spiders. The spider constructors do produce radar. Partly because of that exact reason, but unfortunately just are not in position to deal with this. And also, again, it kind of fell behind when it came to this energy production in the beginning. And overall, when it came to just production... But now, you know, it's getting in range. The ducks die. Does work out. And also, to be fair, fleas are likely to be reasonably effective against ducks, at least in large numbers. I mean, they're a, almost a quarter of the cost of ducks. Or a little over the quarter of the cost of ducks. About a third of the cost of ducks. We'll go with that. 
So three fleas to a duck, but the ducks, their fire rate isn't that fast. And if the fleas spread out, they're only going to kill one at a time, so not the worst idea. Anyway, Lieutenant Chan's starting to lose quite a few of their ducks on assault. Switching over to boys, however. Escobar and at least able to secure areas around their main base, but now they're struggling to get that expansion going. Lieutenant Chan's slightly ahead. Not too far, though. Escobarado just getting ready on the static defenses. I mean, I don't agree with the use of pickets here. People were asking last week, why are there no pickets? Why are people building lotuses? And the reason largely is that pickets are 10 metal more expensive than lotuses. But they don't deal that much more damage. They're probably going to have their costs reduced at some point. I mean, that's sort of, there is some discussion about that. But yeah, at this point they are expensive and not really worth building. Because it used to be they were they were 80, they were 10 metal less than lotuses, so they had a lot of use as a result because, you know, they're really good against glaives and other fast raiding units. They're also cheaper than lotuses and have a wider range. Now they still have a longer range, but they're more expensive and still only have three shots before reloading. So they still kind of are disadvantaged in that way that they always were, but, you know, the range advantage, hard to say that's useful compared to just the lotuses. Speaking of... Lotus is at least keeping Escobar Bombardo somewhat competitive in the game, though going for a very early crab. I do not agree with this. That crab is coming out far too early. I'm also not sure why you're going for the conch here. I don't think Escobar Bombardo is quite aware of the way armor mechanics work. That conch is not going to die anytime soon. I mean, on top of the fact that, Lotus, that Venoms don't deal a huge amount of damage, conches, when crouched like that, are armored. They take a third damage. So, yeah, a little bit of a waste there. Does bait out some ducks, though. That wasn't a waste. That was nice. Okay, so I will I will give them that. Lost a Venom for that, but... Eh, venom for two ducks. Eh, it's actually not even that even. And actually two Venoms, thanks to that boy. Yeah, it's actually a big problem with this particular matchup, too. Is about that... Spiders, in general, struggle against skirmishers. Recluses are great anti-skirmishers, but the rest of the spider factory essentially... Runs into trouble when skirmishers come in. Now you get... And a lot of that is because of their speed. Now, you get the boy coming in there with a slow shot, and that just exacerbates the problem, because now, not only were spiders slow to begin with, now they basically can't avoid the boy trying to retreat. So, unfortunately, it's not really the best position for spiders to be in in this matchup overall. And I don't... Like I said, I agree with the use of the recluses here. They are the thing to use, but I just... Yeah, even that's still a little bit tough to make work. And Escamabara was a little late on that. Fortunately, their commander as well. Looking dire, it's going down. That's the commander down. Escamabara losing a fair bit of their economy on top of that. Now starting to fall significantly behind. Losing storage as well. And now Lu Chen Chan's has all the time in the world. Going for the Grizzly themselves. The Grizzly versus... Oh, no. Was the crab cancelled? I think the crab was cancelled. Nope, the crab is not cancelled. The crab exists. The crab is way out of position, but it does exist. And I mean, that wouldn't be a bad choice. Like, putting that forward wouldn't be a terrible idea. I mean, a little tricky. I would, I'm not sure what you're going to do with that, because the grizzly... So the typical thing for crab, of course, is the crab spire. And you terraform up a big big stalactite, and then, or stalagmite, rather, and then you just put the crab on top of that. But... Now, against Grizzly, that's not a bad idea. What ends what will end up happening is the Grizzly will be slightly outranged by the Crab's... Because the Crab's range goes up with height, but the Grizzly's range goes down. Just because projectile... It's a ballistic weapon versus a direct fire laser weapon. And that means that the... You know, the, if properly set up, the Crab could outrange the Grizzly, but unfortunately, it's way in the back, and I don't know why. Like, Escobombardo invested... a huge amount of their economy into that crab. Most of their economy, really, is that... Actually, most of their... I don't really want to check it right now, because it'll block off the screen. Apologies in a sec. If you look at their army value... Yeah, Eskimo Barado, half their army value is that crab, which is off in the corner. Just now, it's doing something, but being out of position like that is going to really sink them regardless. Unfortunate for them, because that would have been a really useful asset to have in the front lines. Like, right now. And finally, it is coming in, but unfortunately, I'm not quite sure where it's going. 
But again, I don't disagree with the use of the crab in general. I mean, it doesn't have to worry about being slowed because it's usually stationary when it attacks. And you can put it on a spire, and that spire will give it extra range. Not to mention, it doesn't really it has enough splash damage to not really care about the fact that amp units are quite mobile. Unfortunately for Lu Chen Chan's, they're being assaulted on all I mean Yeah, the commander's getting the stinger nest up. That's that's never good. When you have to deal with the opponent's commander coming at you like that, you don't want that. You never want that. So right now, Lu Chen Chan's down like 15 metal per second. Have that crab up. Have the crab in position with the armor and everything. Oh yeah, I suppose also the HP as it is. Like, worth noting, that HP, like, at one armored, slow basically doesn't affect it either. So that's the other thing. Crabs really do counter boys. And there it is. There's the spire. There's the range. I mean, there is still... I mean, obviously, it's going to take a little while for that to still be the case, but, you know. Compared to this, yeah. I mean, it's... Grizzly is... can be outranged here. Like in the two range circles right now. Yeah. So, like, Grizzly moved back here. They'd be outranged by the crab. As it stands, though, the crab is still being assaulted on all sides. And while Weaver was kindly trying to repair it, it's no longer able to. So the crab has lost all logistical support. Ducks and boys on all sides. I mean, they're getting destroyed, but if that crab goes down, that is it. Eskimo Barada has nothing, and trying to go for a second crab, I would not recommend. I mean, really, at this point, what they need is a bunch of recluses. Something as a support force to help keep this crab alive, because this crab goes down, that's it. And this crab's gonna go down. And that's it. That crab's gone. So the crab down, there's nothing really stopping the Chen Chan from just marching on Tesco Barado's base. They have 30 seconds for that first for that second crab to come up. It's not happening. At least not in any reasonable amount of time. And with that too, Lu Chen Chan's just attacking on all sides again. They have the commander just marching in with stingers and small assault force. They have the grizzly at the front lines. Actually, the crab might get done before. The, yeah, the crab looks like it'll be get done before the assault force is completely in. But I don't know. Eskimo Barado's uh, it's looking pretty tired for them. They're trying to reclaim. I I respect this. They are trying to reclaim the front lines. So that, I still think that's that is a good idea. But unfortunately, that grizzly is still stopping it. They tried. They tried hard. It's not enough, and a second grizzly is on the way. Crab is up, but it would take another spire for that to even be viable right now, and that's even that won't be enough. But actually, it wouldn't need a spire. It doesn't need a spire. It just needs a place to sit. But, yeah, the problem is without the spire, it can't really outrange the grizzly. And if it can't outrange the grizzly, then it can't really do much to hold this all back. Because that is the only thing really here. Is that on loop? Well, it is, but... Actually, it is on loop. That explains why it was built out the way it was. No! The crab cannot move! The crab moves, it's over! And the crab moved, it moved way too much! Ah, oh, that let the slow be built up, and that crab is now gone again. Eskimo Barado has nothing. Trying to get some Venoms up, but they're just so far behind. They're so far behind territory control. They're so far behind in terms of army value. I mean, unfortunately, that crab just... It didn't get its proper support. Like, if, if Eskimo Barado had switched up to Recluses and used that to support the crab on the pillar, I think that would have turned this whole thing around. Either Recluses or Redbacks. Because to get rid of the ducks going forward, like, recluses for the boys, run back for the ducks. Although, if you had to pick one, I'd go with recluses, just because the boys would completely wreck the redbacks, and the ducks can, uh, the recluses can still deal with the ducks. But yeah, unfortunately, that was that. And if the crab hadn't <clears throat> had been told to focus, to attack the, the grizzly, then that would have also worked. But at this point, Esquimon Barado just desperately trying to stay in this, reclaiming like mad, and I do, again, respect that. That is the one thing that's keeping them at all in this economically, but even then, they're still 20 metal per second behind with Reclaim. And that's one more Weaver down. I mean, Lu Chen Chan knows exactly what to hit with that. Please coming in, looking like trying to find some information, figure out what's going on with Lu Chen Chan's forces. And the answer is way too much for Eskimo to deal with. Like, honestly, I am 
not sure what they're even thinking right now. I mean, they definitely want to try to pull this game back in their favor. They're definitely not throwing the towel if they can help it, but I don't think they can help it. Rexler's coming in here. The Hermit's trying to use to tank. Good choice, actually. I mean, they do survive that one Grizzly shot. But unfortunately, it's just not enough forces to deal with the Grizzly. Like, that... The Hermits really are a good choice, but it looks like, no, still not much has changed with... No, the, unfortunately, the the factory queue has not changed. Eskimo Barada hasn't gone and reshuffled how their factory is producing units, or what units their factory is producing. And their current set is just not working out for them. And the Chen Chan's essentially just going, you know, throwing out Grizzlies whenever they want to. Alongside Boy Duck. And also... Okay, they have an airplane. I guess just in case. Oh yeah, not just in case. Throw the Lico down. Nail the Caretakers. I was expecting Thunderbird, but Lico works too. I mean, again, this is just a matter of Lu Chen Chan's cleaning up Eskimo who's been very reluctant to throw in the towel here. Like, actually to the point that I'm going to be speeding this game up a bit, because Eskimo like, they don't have a chance here. I don't know why Lu Chen Chan's hasn't assaulted more. I don't know what they're expecting. But, yeah, this is... This game is over. This game has been over for a while. Like, I don't know if there was a gentleman's agreement or something regarding how to finish off this game, or if Lu Chen Chan's is just being really scared of Widows or really scared of... I don't know, some kind of counterattack. Clearly no longer. Clearly this... Oops. No, I... No, I... Could you... Ah. Well, that is that. Still a game to be down. I mean, it doesn't really matter. The game is over. Lu Chen Chan's takes it. And takes it... I mean, very convincingly. I don't think there was a point where Eskimo had any kind of advantage. I mean, that duck was starting to do some work in the middle of the map, but... Yeah, it really wasn't much. Oh well, some games are like that. So anyway, that was that. Next match is going to be presumably a more even one between Kingstad and Fef Fury Regon. I apparently that's somebody else who just renamed recently, but I don't know who they were. Anyway, that at least looks like it will be an even match. The the game thinks it'll be even. So yeah. Stay tuned for that, and seriously, why do you have to put so many weird capitals in your name? Anyway, that'll be on Scaryland, by the way.